Hello, this is a video about fluid pressure and force, one of the many applications of integration. First, to define pressure, it's defined as the force per unit of area over the surface of a body. So the formula for this, the pressure P of an object at a depth H in a liquid is pressure equals W times H. Remember, H is the depth and W is the weight density of the liquid per unit of volume. This is fluid pressure on strictly a horizontal plane. <clears throat> now with regard to fluid force on a horizontal plane, we use Pascal's principle, which states that the pressure exerted by a fluid at a depth H is transmitted equally in all directions. Fluid pressure is given in terms of force per unit area, or pressure P equals force over area. This equation can be arranged to obtain the fluid force on a submerged horizontal surface. So fluid force F is equal to pressure times area. We will now use this equation in an example. <clears throat> in example one, find the fluid force on a rectangular metal sheet measuring three feet by four feet that is submerged in six feet of water. Water has a weight density of 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. <clears throat> so we begin with, from Pascal's principle, we have force equals pressure times area. <clears throat> so please note the following before I finish up this formula. We need the following information here. We need that, okay, pressure equals, from our original given formula for pressure, it's W times H. Remember, W is weight density. Weight density is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. So that's 62.4 and then if you look at the depth, we're submerged six feet. So my depth, my H, is six. And multiply the two together and we'll end up getting 374.4 pounds per a square foot. <clears throat> Only other thing we need would be the area. <laughs> the area A of this rectangular sheet is simply just 3 times 4, which would be 12 feet squared, or 12 square feet. <clears throat> so that being said, my force on this horizontal plane is going to be 374.4. Times 12. So at the end of the day, this comes out to be 4,492.8 pounds. So this is fluid force on a horizontal plane. It's pretty straightforward. Where the calculus comes into play is when we're talking about fluid force on a vertical plane, because obviously the depth, which, for instance, if you had a rectangle that you submerged in water vertically, based on the depth, the bottom portion of the rectangle is going to be impacted differently by force than the top portion of the rectangle because of how it's submerged in the water. The deeper you go, the pressure increases. So we have to account for that using some calculus here. So the force F exerted by a fluid of constant weight density W against a submerged vertical plane region from Y coordinates of C to Y coordinates of D is given by the integral. You have weight density, you integrate from C to D, H of Y times L of Y with respect to Y. You need H of Y, which is the depth of the fluid at Y, and you need L of Y, which is the horizontal length of the region at Y. So the best way to understand this is to actually look at an example. <clears throat> So we have a vertical gate in a dam that has the shape of an isosceles trapezoid eight feet across the top and six feet across the bottom with a height of five feet. What is the fluid force on the gate when the top of the gate is four feet below the surface of the water? 
water has a weight density of 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Well, good news here is I do have my formula here for fluid force on a vertical plane. I know my weight density. Weight density is 62.4, but we have a little bit of work to do here. So I already have a picture of a trapezoid on the screen here. And what we're going to do now is kind of draw this orientated on a coordinate plane. So I have a gate that the top of the gate's four feet below the surface, and I need to draw that here. So I'm going to draw my xy axis. And that gate is one, two, three. The top of the gate is four feet below the water surface. So there it is right there. Next, the gate is five feet tall. So think about this. So that means the bottom of the gate is going to go, okay, if the top's at negative four, the bottom would have to go all the way down to negative nine. So you have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's five units. Next order of business. The top is eight feet across. So I have my top. It's eight feet wide. And then I have my bottom. My bottom is six feet wide. <clears throat> so obviously this bottom region is going to be having more force exerted on it than the top portion because it's deeper in the water. So what I have to do here, what the ultimate goal here is, is to partition this trapezoid gate into horizontal regions or horizontal chunks or disk. With thickness delta y. So this literally this vertical trapezoid is going to be broken up into infinitely many, many pieces with thickness, or I guess you could say height, delta y. All right, so one thing that we're going to do here is we need to define, okay, we have W, the weight density. We need to find H of Y. We need to find that depth. So the depth, H of Y, is going to be well obviously it varies based on where you are vertically on this gate <clears throat> so actually the height is given by negative y so look at this whenever the y coordinates negative four plug it in for the depth equation here you got negative negative four giving you positive four that means you're four feet below the water you plug in your negative nine Negative, negative 9 is 9. You're at a depth of 9 feet below the water. So that's your height equation. <clears throat> now, as far as your length, your horizontal length equation, <clears throat> the horizontal length will be dictated by, okay, from this left diagonal line of the trapezoid to the right diagonal line. In this picture, I can say, that the length from the y-axis to the right-hand diagonal line is given by x. For instance, if you're on the x-axis and you're at 4, well then that tells you you're 4 units wide. If you're on the x-axis, you're at 5. That means this right portion of the trapezoid at that particular disk or that particular increment, your, thick, or your length is 5. <clears throat> so how do you find the length between the x act or the y axis and the diagonal right hand line well you know you can find the equation of a line if you have two points so that's what we're going to do here we have three negative nine and we also have four negative four So we have, okay, equation of the line on the right-hand side.
this is the diagonal line. <clears throat> Has to be found by using the two points, 4, negative 4, and 3, negative 9. All right, so we can find the slope. To write the equation of the line, we need the point and slope. So the slope is going to be negative 9 minus negative 4 over 3 minus 4. And that's going to give me negative 5 over negative 1, which is 5. <clears throat> So now you use point slope form to write the equation of the line. You'll have, okay, y, I'll use the point 3, negative 9, y minus negative 9 equals 5, open parentheses, x minus 3. Now what my goal here is, is the, the thickness of the right half of my region or the length I should say is going to be given if I solve this equation for x so what is x in terms of y because that's what my integration formula is it's in terms of y y plus 9 equals 5x minus 15 then you're going to go ahead <clears throat> And you're going to subtract the 9 from both sides. y equals 5x minus 24. Which means x equals y plus 24 over 5. All right, so that's ultimately what your goal is. You might have done it slightly differently, but we know that x equals y plus 24 over 5. But x only represents the right-hand half of any of the given regions. 2 times x would have to represent the entire length of the whole partition here. <clears throat> so what I have here now is the equation L of y equals 2x which is 2 times y plus 24 over 5 so that's 2 fifths times y plus 24 So that's everything we need for this formula. We have our W, our weight density. We have our H of Y, which is negative Y. And then we have our L of Y. <clears throat> so when I calculate the integral, I have force is equal to, you have 62.4. And you're integrating h of y would have been negative y and then you have your l of y or length which is two-fifths two-fifths y plus 24 you're going to be integrating with respect to y So that's our start, that's our setup. It's now time to actually go in and evaluate the integral. So once we found the components, we're then able to set up the integral and now we're going to evaluate. So here it goes. <clears throat> One thing that we do wanna discuss is where do the bounds come from? And that goes back to our picture that this region goes down as far as y equals negative nine to y equals negative four. So let me go ahead and write those in. You're integrating with respect to y. That's why you're looking at where is this region defined along the y-axis, negative 9 
to negative 4. All right, now let's evaluate. This is equal to, I'm going to pull the negative sign and the 2 out of 5 out front of the integral with the 62.4. And we're integrating from negative 9 to negative 4. And then we'll go ahead and distribute the y into the set of parentheses that follows, which is going to give me y squared plus 24y. Negative 62.4 times 2 over 5 does give you negative 24.96. We can go ahead and integrate y squared into y cubed over 3. Then 24y squared will become, 24y will become 24y squared over 2. Remember your bounds, y equals negative 9 to y equals negative 4. So you have negative 24.96. We can simplify just a little bit. y cubed over 3 plus 12y squared. y equals negative 9 to y equals negative 4. From here, it's a matter of plugging in your upper bound, plugging in your lower bound, and then subtracting. So y cubed over 3, that's negative 4 cubed over 3 plus 12 times negative 4 squared that's plugging in the upper bound <laughs> minus let's plug in the lower bound negative 9 cubed over 3 plus 12 times negative 9 squared That's plugging in the lower bound. And what happens when you do finally get the chance to evaluate all of this, you end up getting negative 24.96, 170.67 minus 729. So at the end of the day, you're going to end up getting after evaluating this, you will get a fluid force of 13,936 pounds. And that's how you calculate fluid force on a vertical plane. So the key is to break up that vertical plane into horizontal components each with thickness delta y. Remember delta y goes to zero and that's how integration is born. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.